Dr. Ganesh Cheruparambil is a chartered economic policy analyst with over six years' experience in both the financial services and academic sectors. As part of Thrive's research team, he strives to bring together multiple disciplines to solve the problems facing our world. In this presentation, Ganesh discusses the relationship between poverty and food security and how policy changes can impact people's lives. Today is my topic, which I have chosen is inflation and poverty. If you have gone through the literature or if you try to search for this, there are quite many studies which has happened. Now, there are quite many indicators which are available from an economic point of view. I have taken uh, inflation because that is what uh, at the moment uh, which is we everyone speaks about, which is going higher and higher, and it do have its own effects on poverty. So today, the introduction, and I have just taken up uh, the two concepts, then uh, pre-pandemic, pandemic, then the current situation, and some recommendations on that and the conclusion. When I look at inflation, inflation has been there for ages when we speak about economy. And inflation is basically understood from the goods and services and its prices going over a period of time. Now, what is the speciality of inflation as the current moment is this. We speak about inflation happens from a supply side, that is, uh, might be the shortage of raw materials and things like that. At times we speak about from the demand point of view, that is people do have money and chase goods and it creates inflation. Now there are times because oil was something which is uh, used for, see whatever, sometimes people say, this morning I consumed oil. In the sense, I am not consuming oil as such, but whatever we have, do have a weightage of oil consumption in it. So that also carries uh, inflation part into it. Now, the peculiarity of current inflation is it all these things are put together. So that is one of the things the inflation makes much prominent when I look at it. Now, when I look poverty, poverty is basically multidimensional. And poverty, if you search about poverty, you can see poverty is being looked from a psychological perspective, sociology, economics, and almost all studies try to look into poverty. So it is actually multidimensional. But one of the concepts which I like the most is from Amartya approach, that is the capability approach. And in that approach, he speaks about two things, uh, the functioning dimension and the capability dimension. That is functioning is the people do have the freedom to achieve what they wish for. It has to be within the moral limits or within the law limits of the country or the economy, whatever, or the society by and large. But Capability is enhancing themselves for the process of achieving this functioning. Now, from a rational point of view, poverty is something when the capability is deprived. So some solution speaks about is the education is something which can enhance this capability. So that is where this multi-dimension of poverty comes in. Now, for an Economic perspective, we look at poverty from the income dimension. There is an income approach. Now, when we look at the poverty, it goes beyond the income approach. When I speak today, I basically look from an income perspective, by and large, mostly. But when we measure uh, the poverty in an economy, it goes beyond this income dimension. So, when we speak about what is the poverty line, that is $1.9 per day, but that was according to the 2011 Purchasing Power Parity, PP. So recently they have revised and it has gone beyond $1.2. So that is according to 2017 Purchasing Power Parity, which has come out in September 2022. So from a poverty line perspective, anyone lacking any financial resource can fall below poverty line. And that is one of the income dimension, but poverty stricken is more complex than this having dollar 1.9. So even if a recession hits, basically it can have a multiple effects or ripple effects on individuals uh, income dimension. Now there are non-income dimension of poverty. 
Now, this is what is more interesting. When we try to look at poverty, it goes beyond this income dimension and it takes all this education, health, access, access to social services, vulnerability, social exclusion. All these things are taken into consideration when you measure poverty. So it goes far beyond. That is why I say it is complex. It is much beyond the income dimension by itself. So poverty is hunger, poverty is lack of shelter. So everything, all this lack or absence of any quite many factors can turn out to be poverty. Now, if you look at this non-income dimension of poverty, what happens is most of the things are denial of rights. So that is where inequality gets attached to it. Or it is part of when we speak, wherever there is inequality, you can connect mostly with the poverty by itself because it becomes denial of rights. So that is where we said the complexity of poverty comes in in the non-income dimension. But when you put in the quantitative terms, mostly we need to speak from numbers where we come across this income dimension. So that is where the income becomes more relevant. Now, this is something which I have taken from uh, India because I have been closely looking at the Indian economy. So that is where I could speak about some numbers from the Indian economy. Now, in India, there was an experience of inflation 2006 and 2011. So basically speaking, almost all the countries do have done well till 2011. After that, there was quite many things which are ups and downs, which is keep happening in economies. Now, in India, what has happened is this. Uh, in 2011, there was an inflation which was going higher. In 2006 also, inflation has gone higher. Now, when this inflation has gone higher, now if you look at a 10 percentage increase in domestic food prices in a developing Asia, whichever country, mostly this is uh, for uh, India, created around 64.4 million poor people. So this is something from the history, which was ha which happened in uh, 2011 and 2006. Now, accordingly, if you extrapolate this data, it speaks that almost 30 percentage increase in any of the global food prices could increase percentage of poor by 5 percentage. So this is from the World Bank point of view, 5.7 percentage. So it is if inflation keeps going higher and higher, it still do can push people into poverty. So what is the net effect of this historic event, which I am speaking about? It actually has reduced the purchasing power parity. Now, the choices between choices which are available for the poor, as a later point of time, becomes uh, an exclusion. So that means you don't have that choice anymore because your total purchasing or the expenditure goes higher and higher. So it obviously brings in a reduction in the quality of food intake. So obviously it do have its ramifications in individual's life. Now, this is not only for individual. When we speak about a family, might be one or two in, uh, individuals are earning much higher and there are kids which are relying on them. So the whole family, the quality of food, that also can go lower. Now, people's expenditure, in that case, the people expenditure will go higher by 15 or 30%. See, from a finance point of view, you say that the 20% of whatever you get, your income should be saved and the rest you should be used for your expenditure, investment and whatever purpose. Now, not even 20, not even 10, not even 5 percentage can be saved at this case because their expenditure is going higher and higher. According to that, the inflation doesn't get into their annual income or let's say monthly income. So it doesn't get into it, but your expense goes higher and higher. That's the problem which comes in. There is no savings and contingency, so the vicious circle of the poverty can happen again and again. So this is the net effect of uh, 2011 uh, poverty, oh, sorry, inflation in India. Now, when you look at the current scenario, now why I have put this chart is if you look at this 2019, January 2019, so it is just to before the pandemic hit, I mean, all over the world, at least. Now, here, if you look at, inflation was quite normal. 
I mean, it was within the control or there were there were issues with the economy, like low um, employment and unemployment was a problem, things like that. But much more than that, if you look at the inflation, inflation was rather under control. Now, that was in 2019. All of a sudden, we got stuck with the COVID pandemic. And what has happened is this government spending has increased. Now, the rich countries, almost like a 10% of the GDP, they have spent it to keep up the economic growth of that country. Now, emerging economies, it is 3% and the poorest nations, it is 1% of the GDP. So there are differences, like some countries have gone beyond the 10%, some of the emerging economies have gone beyond the 3%. So that has happened, but this is an approximate numbers which has taken into consideration. Now, even in this case, in the COVID, 71 to 100 million people were pushed into extreme poverty. And quite many places, you might have seen that the people have lost job, quite many places. And the welfare things or the programs which were running in the economies couldn't run anymore or were not reached at the poor. And so quite many disruptions. And if you look at the UN side, they have even the UN have mentioned that quite a many quite many were slipped into poverty because of the COVID. Now, this thing is one of the factors for the current inflation. There is an easy access of money which was there because of the low interest rates and there is pumping of money into the system, quite many economies. Now, this is because of the pandemic, then there are political choices, political gain, all these things are part of the economy at that point of time. Now, currently, there is a war scenario which we speak about the Ukraine war. Now, once the war has started, if you look at the wheat, cooking oil, gasoline, all these prices have shooted up. Even in cooking oil, there is some somewhere like 150 percentage. That's what they speak about. That much percentage of growth has happened. So, if you look at <clears throat> this, many people have pushed into poverty. 51 million lives on less than dollar 1.9 per day and 20 million less than dollar 3.2 per day because according to various groups there is a bifurcation for the poverty line now after once this war is induced then the wheat prices are up 50 and the oil plus oil prices are going even further shooting up now at this point of time opec has said that they are trying to cut down the production of the oil so all this geopolitics also is adding up in, into it now Food and fuel can determine overall inflation within an economy. As I said, there is a huge link between both food and fuel. Now, the problem is most of the developing nations which import crude oil or the oil do have much worse scenario. Now, the UN has come up with a statement saying that need to have the charity. That means money has to be offered to developing nations or the poor nations. Now the whole problem is this, when uh, someone has to offer the charity, almost all the central banks are increasing their interest rate. If the interest rates are going up and up, now the spending by the even the corporates or the individuals, all these things starts to cutting down. And at the one uh, another end, inflation. So the central banks are trying to control this inflation through monetary tightening. That is what which is happening. Now, if you look at the inflation, now these are some of the so one survey which is being done for with the economists. So, if you look at the inflation now, United States. Um, let's come to South Asia and Central Asia. See. 63 percentage chance is that in 22 and in 23 even. So this much percentage of inflation can hit the economy. So that is very high. That means the purchasing power parity of the poor will go down and down. Now the Central Asia, if you look at 67 and 40. So this is how everyone, quite many expect inflation will play out in future. That is in 2022 and 23 which some speak about in 23, there is a possibility of recession. I don't have a data to say that there is a recession, but this is what which is happening. Now, if you look at uh, before the pandemic, let's say 2019, 
core services and core goods they do have okay even core goods doesn't have much otherwise the inflation is kept by the core services the services which are being offered in uh, economy but after the pandemic if you look at and coming towards 2002 the energy as well as the food you see comparatively it was lower but it is going higher and higher and the energy and the food they do have a high high correlation so that is where the inflation will start shooting up higher and higher so this too is going higher and higher which is not a good sign for economies so this is where i said regional and global poverty estimates in 2018 and if you look over here some of the countries don't have any change that is in 22 projected and even in 22 when that is the poor in millions so if you look at latin american caribbean there is the 23 that has improved to not improved has gone up to 25 middle east it remains the same and the rest of the world it is comparatively same now when we speak about 21 this is the recent data in 21 it is after the pandemic so before the pandemic in un by itself has said that there is an improvement in the poverty that is so many people have gone above the poverty line but over here it has i mean the number of people which has brought down is much higher so in countries there are inflation which is uh, the world bank by itself has said 15 percentage and it is keep going and in 90 percentage of low and middle income countries do have high inflation some of the countries if you look at there is some 80 percentage 70 60 even 20 percentage of inflation there are countries which do have and the another problem which is coming along is the world food program has reported that in coming years the food insecurity will be another issue the food insecurity also features in then both are getting highly complex which can push quite many people into poverty so this is the price index for the food now if you look at it is going much higher and higher so it is from 1990 onwards and we are almost like see if you look at 2006 then this time we do have the recession and uh, collapse financial collapse now we are going far beyond that the current stage so the cost of transportation which was rather go, uh, low if you look at in 2021 uh, here 19 because of the pandemic there was a low and then it starts speaking up both the transportation cost as well as the fuel which is also not a good sign fertilizers obviously when the fertilizer prices goes up the food prices also will go up now another fact is this the debt outlook of the countries it is not good for quite many countries now countries will have a high debt and if you look at low income countries their debt is increasing so the spending the welfare program which could be run by the government will have a problem so that is where the debt outlook is not that good for especially the low income countries almost all the countries do have this problem but higher basically with the low income countries you know if you look at the cost of living now the average real wages will decline and if you look at the low income countries economists have agreed much higher than 80 percentage so they are speaking that the wages will go down and if the wages goes down obviously you know the first person the first people who will lose the job will be in the lower category so that is one of the problems which will come in when the cost of living goes higher now this is another problem where currently we see about friend shoring bringing back production to our own country so it's like a protectionism which is happening now the globalization was a somewhat good for most of the countries because they do have the production factor and things happening in their economy but when this globalization ends now it do have a problem with the especially with the developing countries because they might quite many can lose job now this is something from the world economic forum they speak about high inflation and high food insecurity now if you look at quite many countries of central asia 
sub-Saharan Africa over here, if you look at the food security issues are almost like 50 percent and the total inflation is also going higher and higher, which is not a good sign, again, linked with poverty. Now, what are the solutions for this? An efficient public distribution scheme, that is which of in India, which I have seen that efficient public distribution scheme could help people out. Might be you give them rice or wheat, whatever, at the very low cost with the people. Might be a certain kilo of things like that. It works, but that a distribution system has to be well enhanced. That is one of the things which has to be taken into consideration. Now, given the problem, if we have a food security issue, I don't know how far this could be run in a better way. Now, there are studies which have mentioned that the gender enhancement, especially when women take care of the family, especially in the Asian countries, now, there is an enhancement or the poverty could be reduced to some extent in some of the families because there could be the problem of alcohol, drug, and things like that, which could be get rid of. So that is what in the developing nations, some of uh, the countries which they, they have studied and given the evidence for that. Gender enhancement is also a solution. Now, education, especially skill enhancement. See, if you go back to a few years back, there was something called the widening gap between the rich and the poor, and the gap was justified saying that the returns from education, that was some time back. Now, nowadays, when almost, almost all the economies and everywhere, they speak about the skill enhancement, which could be with a lower cost could be taught. So that is something which has to be, with the basic education, the skill enhancement support should be given. Now, climate change, is a big issue which is coming up everywhere, which can, in quite many ways, affect individuals, especially those who are in the coastal area, not only the coastal area, which has to do with the forest or anybody or any individuals or a group or a society which depends on the forest and the climate, they do have a problem. So committing to climate change and enhancing people in a different orientation, that is something which all the economies which has to try to do and commit themselves. Universal basic income. So there are quite many speak about welfare programs do fail. So there is another option which they come up with a universal basic income. Uh, that can help. It, it could bring out quite many people out of poverty to a larger extent. But it is not devoid of any issues. There could be, but by and large, that is a possibility. Now, if you look at this, I'll stop here. This is my last slide. If you look at this, this is uh, countries which do have poverty. Now, I am not justifying capitalism, but if you look at most of the countries which do have taken the political affiliation of liberalism or has gone much with the capitalism, the poverty has come to a larger extent to a larger nil. In the sense, some say, some from an economic point of view, if you give a liberalization to the economies, it can take care of itself. And they argue that um, poverty is not a market failure. So in that case, if you could push liberalism or the capitalism in the economies, it by itself can take care of the poverty within the economy to a larger extent but it doesn't mean that it can eradicate poverty in the economy. So this is something which I have noticed and uh, which people also, there are a few who have come across in uh, economics has spoken about this liberalism of the capitalism. So nowadays they speak about capitalism has to have some sort of change, that is true, but by and large it affects. So this is my reference and thank you.